Chile on Sunday extended a state of emergency to regions swept by protests which originally started because of public transit fare hikes. The protests have caused the government to retaliate in a violent manner and the Chilean president Sebastian Pinera to declare a state of emergency. The objective of this state of emergency is very simple but very serious. To ensure public order, to ensure the peace of residents of the city of Santiago. Yeah, restoring peace by sending in troops detaining 5,000 people, tear gassing kids in protests where 11 have been killed so far, and even shooting at protesters defying the curfew. Just came and started shooting indis indiscriminately at people. We had to hide behind this tree. That kind of peace. But how do we get here? Now, the protests originally were sparked by a rise in public transit prices as students started ambushing stations and dodging fares en masse. The government response was, of course, brutal, violent police retaliation. And you might be thinking, wow, all of this over metro price hikes? Well, no. The fare increases may have been the catalyst for these protests, but unrest, especially amongst younger Chileans and students, has been bubbling just under the surface for years. Observers and protesters say the rebellion resembles the kind of unrest Chile faced in the dying days of Augusto Pinochet's dictatorship three decades ago, and it's fueled by deep-rooted disillusionment at how millions of citizens have been frozen out of the country's economic rise. Chile is one of the wealthiest Latin American nations, but it's wrought by income inequality. Turns out that your country country topping South America virtually across all capitalist metrics of success, whether it be per capita GDP, the UN Human Development Index, and multiple freedom rankings, is not enough when half of Chile's workers are earning $550 a month or less. While the increased public transportation costs seem to detonate the protests, they're simply the tip of the iceberg. Chileans are angry at the quality of public education. They're angry at their shoddy healthcare system, their shrinking pensions, their low salaries, their work conditions. They're also upset at the corruption of the state and the collusion between the media, the police, the wealthy, and the politicians who prop up and defend neoliberal austerity measures in the country as the wealthy dodge taxes. Is this starting to sound familiar? Don't forget that the people of Chile have been asking nicely for these changes for some time now and were largely ignored. And so far, the militant action has seemed to work, especially after unions joined the student protest, launching a general strike to demand better wages, pensions, as well as quality education and healthcare. And guess what? President Pinera has already promised to decrease the public transit costs, increase basic pension by 20%, and proposed a law that will compel the state to cover the costs of expensive medical treatments. He also vowed to increase the minimum wage and introduce a new higher tax bracket and even cut electricity rates. Now that part, however, might not be familiar to Americans. Maybe one day though. I'm Asam Piker and this has been The Breakdown. Want to see more videos like this? Well then, subscribe to the TYT channel below. Also, don't forget to become a TYT member. You can get access for as little as $4.99 a month. Also download the TYT Plus app on your phone or Head over to tyt.com slash join today.